Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, this is not a program on aerospace. So I was just giving y'all something to look at. <laughs> just kind of fake you out. You're like, this could be fun. Not really. <laughs> not really. Um, it is great to see everybody again. I think the last time we did this in 2019, the world was sort of normal. And uh, we did it in a conference room. We were all crammed in there. Some of you may remember that. Uh, so we're going to be just as informal today uh, as we were then. You guys feel free to jump in, ask questions. Um, we are recording this just so people who can't be here can watch it, but we'll take all that stuff out of you all asking questions and stuff. We'll edit all that stuff out. So feel free to do that as we go along. So a lot of stuff has changed, not only the entire world, in everything like before COVID and after COVID, <laughs> that's our line of demarcation now, but a lot of stuff has changed in how we interact with each other at work. Societal expectations have changed. Of course, we have, you guys were doing a virtual workplace before, but we have so much more that's virtual now what are the new rules for that and then of course there are brand new laws um, that we have to deal with there's a brand new supreme court case that changed how we interact with our co-workers so i'm going to go over all the new stuff today with some reminders about how we want to interact and and what we want our workplace to be so that's really what we're going to talk about today and so you know i think what we all have to remember as you are thinking about coming to work every day uh, whether it's sitting down in front of your computer uh, at home or whether it's coming into the physical workspace is you matter. I mean, without you all, <laughs> our court system in Tennessee would be at a loss. I mean, you, you can, you know, it's great. We have judges, but they it's bigger than that, right? It's a bigger operation than that. So uh, as we talk about this, I want you to remember that you matter, and if we broke that down just a little bit more, it doesn't even matter what you do here. It doesn't even matter what your role is here. But the fact of the matter is when you think about, okay, I matter, what does that mean? It means your well-being. And we all know that mental health and well-being is has come to the forefront. Thank goodness it needed to, right? Um, we want our mental health and well-being to be good. Uh, your career matters. Getting evaluations, getting feedback knowing what, what advancement opportunities are available to you, being treated fairly and appropriately and by the law in those advancement opportunities. I mean, your career matters and the work environment in which you do all the wonderful things that you do to keep us going and to keep the rule of law working in Tennessee, all of that has to be done in a work environment that is a good one, right? It's gotta be comfortable, it's gotta be respectful, it's one that's gotta be motivational, and one where you feel like that you can succeed and go as far as you want to go in your career. So we're going to kind of do a do a deeper dive on the work environment and talk about sort of what's new, what the expectations are, and sort of what do you do if you have a concern that maybe your work environment isn't living up to what it should be. And I can assure you that everybody that I work with uh, and have come into contact with in AOC has been tremendously focused on, we want to have a great work environment. I mean, we, we want people to want to come to work. We want it to be enjoyable uh, as well as productive all day long. So I, I have yet to meet anybody who's like, you know, oh, just sit down and do your hours and go home. It's more, we want to have a great work environment where, you know, you make friends, you have some lifelong friends, uh, you have great times, but you also get a lot of the work done at the same time. So we want you to have a great work environment every single day in all the ways that you interact with each other at work. But a great work environment, <laughs> here's the hard part, it requires you all to do some things. It takes, in fact, every single person that is either online with us this morning or that is here with us in person, it takes every single one of us to make sure that we have that great work environment. You've got to walk the talk of your work environment policies. They're not just on paper. It's not just words on paper. You gotta walk it. And if we're not, then what's the point of having it, right? It's gotta mean something to you all. So I would encourage you uh, to, to look at those policies. I'm gonna put some of them up here and talk to you about some of them today and give you the highlights, but to make sure you know what those policies say because they do get updated from time to time. Uh, you've got to treat your coworkers as you would want yourself to be treated or think about your family members who are out in the working world, how you would want them to be treated. And that's how you ought to interact with all of your coworkers. Obviously, we have to comply 
with all of the laws governing the workplace. Give you a little update on that this morning. Um, and you've got to be willing to raise concerns. Again, I'm putting some of this on you all because you make it a great work environment. And part of that is you speak up when maybe people aren't following our work environment policies. Or if you see a coworker that is maybe just maybe a little bit shy, maybe a, a little bit, you know, not sure, should I go forward? Should I speak up? Help them speak up on their behalf if they aren't being treated appropriately and in accordance with our policies or the employment laws. So again, uh, <laughs> I hate to start out, but you know, I got I got to point the finger at you guys a little bit because it is, isn't it up to all of us? You know, I can't make you have a good work environment. John by himself can't make you have a good work environment. It's all of us. So as we go along, you, you guys kind of take that in. And I know the big question is always, where's the line? Where's the line, Kim? It goes like this, doesn't it? How are we supposed to know where the line is? Are we way, way over the line? Are we in real trouble? Are we, are we behind the line? Are we okay? And you do kind of have to look at yourself and say, from time to time, am I over the line? Did I cross the line? Um, am, am I doing the things that make everybody have a great work environment, including myself, or am I part of not doing that? You know, it's kind of like, am I part of the solution or am I part of the problem? Or as Taylor Swift would say, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. For those of you who like anti-hero, where are my Taylor Swift people? Come on. Where are my Swifties? Somebody needs to break out in song, right? Look what she's doing for the NFL. My goodness, their ticket sales have gone up tremendously. She's changing the whole world. But that's a great song and such a that's such a funny line. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> so we all need to look at ourselves and say, hmm, is it me? <laughs> so let's see how we do when we look at, at your conduct today. We look at where the line is today for what is okay and what is not okay. And remember, folks, <laughs> it's not the workplace of the 60s. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> it's not the workplace of the 70s or the 80s or the 90s. I mean, I've only been 20 years at, at Baker, but I've been practicing employment law for 37 years. And it's certainly not the work environment that it was when I started out in the 80s, right? We've, all, we've come a long way. Um, so where is the line today? Let's, let's kind of dive into that and see if we can figure that out. Uh -oh, apparently I have to be over here to make that work or not. Or we'll do it the old fashioned way. How about that? Oh, that's because there's a sign out thing up there now to work. Okay. So when we're talking about the line, where's the line? One of the places you can go for comfort and what you're doing is okay, is you look at your policies and you do have policies that prohibit discrimination, harassment, and retaliation in the workplace. Discrimination and harassment are prohibited based on what we call the protected classes, right? So the protected classes change all the time. They just do. <laughs> so when you're thinking about it, you're like, why is this always changing? Why is this always a moving target? I don't know what I can do. Well, welcome to life. Life changes, society changes, our laws change to adapt to societal changes. It's the way it is. We can rail against it all we want, but frankly, you know, we're not going backwards, we're going forward. So we gotta look at what it is today and what these protected classes are today. Your policy says we prohibit discrimination, harassment based on all these, you know, litany of protected classes, which is kind of hard to read. I like them like this. <laughs> that way I can see them a little better. This is our current list. When I started practicing law, there were five. There's 14. <laughs> I can't even count it on two hands anymore. So um, I used to be able to reel those off really quickly, but I can't do that as easily now. There's too many of them. So when you look at that board up there, um, I call it kind of the off limits board. You're not supposed to discriminate or treat people differently based on the protected classes. Certainly we're not supposed to be harassing people uh, because of their protected class status. When you look at that, does anybody have any questions just right off the top where you look at that and go, what in the world is that? What does that mean? Say it again. Yeah, what is genetic information? That's when everybody goes, what? <laughs> so uh, we can be tested now um, for our DNA makeup to see if we are predisposed by our genetic makeup to certain illnesses that are hereditary. Breast cancer is a good example, which is sometimes passed down through family members. And so when the American Medical Association started testing people and said, oh, we can test people now for this, Congress, which was very proactive back then, uh, don't, don't, don't let, 
I had to say it. I, I just had to go there. Um, let's not get started on that. Uh, we'll be here all day. Uh, but, but seriously, Congress was very proactive. They said, whoa, hold up. Employers might use that kind of DNA testing for bad purposes to screen people out of the workforce who might be predisposed to these really serious illnesses. Why would an employer do that? What would that be about? Yeah, insurance money, right? It's about money, isn't it? Money's always your first guess. <laughs> it's about money. It's about money. So Congress said, we are not going to let employers ask for genetic information on their employees. We're not going to require, you can't require that your employees be tested. And if an employee happens to disclose it to you through casual conversation or what have you, say, oh, my mother had this, my grandmother had this, and, you know, that's genetic information. You all cannot share that with anybody unless there's a business reason to do so. So it's got a confidentiality part of it too. So it's non-discrimination and it's also a confidentiality protection for people who disclose that kind of thing, either to their supervisor or coworker, HR or anybody else. So that's what that one's about. Other questions about what we have on the list up here? What is the uh, difference between national origin and foreign citizen? Oh, that's a good one. So national origin is in general terms, the country of someone's birth. Uh, it, it sometimes gets expanded to ancestry, but more, more likely it is going to be the country of someone's birth. So somebody that is was not born in the United States, but is here uh, working in the United States, but they were born and raised perhaps in a different country. So that would be discriminating against somebody would say, well, I'm not going to hire you because you weren't born, you know, in the in the domestic United States. That would be discriminatory. You can't do that form of citizenship is so let's assume you're in the hiring process you're not allowed to ask um, do you have a green card do you have a visa were you born in the united states are you a naturalized citizen you can't get into form of citizenship we're not allowed to do that in the hiring interviewing selection process once we've made an offer it's been accepted when somebody starts work we have three days for them to fill out the i-9 form you guys remember doing that you got to show the documents that you're legally authorized to work here. Then if you don't show it in the first three days of employment, we're supposed to let you go. Okay, that's the way that works. So we don't get into that. It's supposed to be to level the playing field. So frankly, in the 70s, there were a lot of employers who said, I'm not going to hire anybody who wasn't born in the United States. I'll consider people who were born outside the United States, but only after I look at all the people who were born here. And Congress said, no, 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 that's not fair. It's a level playing field on the front end, but you've got to be able when you start work to produce that documentation to show you really can work here and you are authorized legally to work here. So we don't we don't we don't care how you're legally authorized to work here as long as you can show those documents and fill out that I-9 form when you actually start work. Does that make sense to everybody? OK, good. All right. So we've got three new ones that you may have noticed. So in the summer of 2020, when we were all dealing with COVID, the United States Supreme Court was apparently bored, didn't have anything to do, <laughs> weren't having oral arguments, they were just kind of hanging out. And they said, gee, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's issue this opinion, which literally was the biggest change we've seen in employment law in 40 years. So it was, it was a very big deal. What the Supreme Court did was they said that sex discrimination, which has been part of our law since 1964, and this is at the federal level, not the state level, but the federal level. Sex includes discriminating against or harassing somebody because of their sexual orientation, their gender identity or expression, and their transgender status. So again, it could be any of those, but that is now part of sex discrimination. So there was no need to pass a new law. This was a Supreme Court opinion. And when the Supreme Court issues an opinion, it is the law of the land. Um, I will be very, very direct and honest with you. Uh, this has been a source of confusion since the opinion was issued because they didn't tell us anything, right, John, in that opinion. They just said, don't discriminate. We're like, okay, <laughs> what does that mean exactly? You know, because they didn't offer us any definitions of these terms. They didn't offer us anything. So the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, who is charged with interpreting these types of laws, they issued guidance for us, technical guidance, in uh, the summer of 2021. So all this is really new. Well, immediately there was a lawsuit filed in uh, the great state of Texas. Uh, they immediately said, oh, no, 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 the EOC's gone way out. That's not what the Supreme Court meant. So 
Texas actually struck them down and said, no, 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 we're not going to look at those guidelines. And so <laughs> in Texas, it's just kind of like, we don't know what it means. Tennessee, there is a case that has been pending forever in Knoxville in federal court. 20 other states joined the case with the attorney general for the state of Tennessee, also challenging those EEOC guidelines. Uh, and it is on hold. There's a stay that's been on for, I don't know, a year and a half. So it's on appeal to the Sixth Circuit right now. So literally, I mean, I'm being as honest as I can. We don't know what the law is. We don't know if it's just we can't discriminate or do, is it mandatory that every organization, for example, use an employee's preferred pronouns or an employee's name or whatever all those issues are. Uh, it, it's just the Supreme Court just didn't really tell us much. In fact, on the restroom issue, which as you all can imagine is an, is an interesting issue, uh, Justice Gorsuch said, uh, oh, that's for another court in another day. I'm not getting into that. I'm like, really, dude, come on. <laughs> Not helping us here, not helping us, you know, just telling us don't discriminate. We don't really know what that means. So it's a very confusing area of the law. If you have questions about it, if an employee were to come to you as a coworker or a manager and say, hey, what about this? I'm thinking about going through the transgender process. I'm, I, I'm going to start identifying openly as the opposite gender or I'm non-binary. They can say that as well. And you're not sure what to do. Uh, just go to HR and get some help. And you know what? They'll just have to look at it at that time and see what is the law on this? Because right now it's just in a state of muddled confusion and it's going to be, you know, you know, it takes a while for things to work through the system, as you all well know better than anybody else. So we just don't know right now. Um, again, employers are just case by case basis. Um, and again, it will become a Gen, Gen Z, which they started graduating from high school in 2019. So they are entering our workforce now. I saw a statistic the other day, big survey. So, you know, it wasn't like 10 people. It was a huge national survey. 19.7% of Generation Z identifies as LGBTQ. 1% of my generation, the baby boomers, 1% identify as LGBTQ. So you can see how that has changed. So this will become a, a bigger workplace issue. Uh, of course, the millennials, um, are, are coming out more and identifying um, as they are more comfortable with. They feel better about that now that we have this law and millennials make up the largest part of the workforce. My age group is on the way out. <laughs> we are on the way out. I'm hanging in there, but we're on the way out. Uh, so anyway, really interesting area of the law. For you all, remember, uh, I, I've seen so many cases where people are harassing in a teasing way, the sort of bantering maybe making a joke. I'm looking around the room to see if we have any men in here who are wearing a pink shirt, but I've seen it before. Some guy will wear a pink shirt and look great in it, but somebody will laugh at him and joke at him and go, what are you gay now? You know, which is just stupid, but stuff happens. Um, you know, the question is, well, does that now violate the law? And so harassing somebody who you don't think is gay, but you're just making jokes about it, or maybe you're doing it because you're mad. You know, that makes the day go by faster. You're just bullying them. Is that against the law? Probably. You know, as we come up, courts are wrestling with all kinds of issues. So, again, I call this the off limit for jokes, kidding, teeth. This is off limits. You can always talk about football. <laughs> We're safe with that. We can talk about baseball, talk about save the whales, this stuff. We don't need to get into anything that might stuff at work. But if you're not sure, please seek out HR and get some help. Okay. We're not trying to get anybody's personal views about any of the protected classes, but I do think we are adults and we have to realize when we come together, aren't we all on the same team? And don't we all have the same goals, right? Uh, that we're, we're all, so again, not trying to change beliefs, because everybody's got a different personal belief about all those 14 things, that's fine. But when we come here, again, we're collaborative. We're cooperative. We get things done. And we don't intentionally make people feel miserable because of one of those 14 protected classes. Y'all good with that? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, examples of conduct. So let's just get into how broad this stuff is. You know, I think we all used to know what harassment was because we were going, oh, <laughs> that, you know, memes, 
you know, texting somebody a meme that you found on the internet can often be inappropriate conduct, right? So if you're doing that to a colleague at work, and if you're at work, is am I doing this as a friend? Am I doing this as a work call? You know, the lines get a little bit blurred, right? When you guys have social functions that are somewhat related to work, you know, do, do all these rules still apply at that social function? Yeah. If it's related to work, yeah. So even though you may be out and about in our great it city of Nashville, <laughs> you may be still subject to all of these rules if it's a So we got to keep all that in mind. So prohibited conduct. So you all can read these as we're sitting here talking. The first two, which is basically the, the sort of sexual harassment that we learned about in the 80s, which was sleep with me or you're fired type stuff, right? Yeah, I think we all get that one. Uh, don't have too many cases like that anymore. Uh, more likely, you're going to see stereotypes, jokes, pranks that are played on people um, that are offensive because of their sexual content or that make people uncomfortable because of their gender. That's kind of what we see in sexual harassment now. Physical contact uh, can be uh, a situation where you may not think that you're doing anything wrong, but the person that you're doing it to may feel really uncomfortable. And, and let's talk about hugs, right? Because, you know, the full frontal body hug for five minutes, too much. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> Stop that. Uh, now we do the side hug and release. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say you can't ever hug anybody at work. My, my law firm's a very huggy law firm, but we do the side hug. And you'll notice, see how I put my hand in the fist when I did that hug? See that hug, that fist? Yeah. I learned that from Peyton Banning. When he has pictures made, you know, with people, I, I gave a speech with him one time and I noticed he did this. I'm like, why are you doing that? So he put his arm around me, but I could feel it was his fist, not the flat of his hand against my back. I was like, why do you do that? I've noticed you do that with everybody. And he said, so nobody will say I rub my hand up and down their back. That's what they taught him at the William Morris Agency. <laughs> He's a big, you know, big speaker now, so he does all that stuff. So yeah, we do the side hug and release. Hostile, intimidating, derogatory stuff. Now, this is when our work environment just really has going downhill, right? When we're doing that stuff, and we're doing it either because you're in one of those protected classes or the, the demeaning comments are about a particular protected class. So that's where we really got to be in. Be very, very careful. Gestures. I hope no one's flipping anybody off at work. Y'all knock that off. Uh, <clears throat> stop it. <laughs> um, if you are picking on people, you know, cursing at an employee, you know, coworker or somebody you supervise or vice versa, your supervisor, not a good idea, right? Not a good idea. So I think we get all that stuff, but there's more. <laughs> the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, Making fun of, talking down about, stereotyping a class of people. Oh, those people, right? You know, those kind of things where you're talking about a group or a class or women are bad drivers is what? A stereotype? Yeah, it's a stereotype. I'm a great driver. Aren't we, ladies, aren't we all great? We're awesome. We know what we're doing. <laughs> um, Again, I say the things you send each other, the things you display on your screensavers at work or on your phone and you're showing it to a coworker. I cannot tell you bizarrely how many cases I have where somebody's showing somebody a picture of their new landscaping at home and the person takes the phone and swipes and goes, whoa, that next picture was not something they were supposed to see. Yeah, stuff happens. So you got to be careful. That's a real case, by the way, folks. Real. I don't make this stuff up. I'm not that funny. Uh, these are real things that really, really happen. Um, making fun of a coworker's religious beliefs or the fact that they don't have any particular religious beliefs. Maybe they're an atheist. That is against the law. Okay, That's violation of your policies, making people, people feel uncomfortable because of that. Even if they don't believe, that is also your right not to believe in any particular um, organized religion is protected by the law. So again, we just have to remember that this stuff can be really broad and we got to be careful that we are, again, <laughs> as Taylor Swift says, you know, that you're not high, I'm the problem. You know, it's me. I'm the one going around doing this kind of stuff and making people feel miserable. Uh, managers who refuse to consider an employee's request for reasonable accommodations based on religious beliefs. Okay. That has been considered to be 
harassment, um, not considering a disabled employee's request for an accommodation based on their medical condition. Now, it might not be granted. It might be an undue hardship, and we can't grant it, but not considering it is the problem. So brand new law, which you'll see I've got it up here, accommodations based on pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions. Brand new law. Congress actually passed something. <laughs> Yay. Um, and it went into effect June 27th of this year, so just a few months ago. So this is brand new. You, you would have thought, you know, we would have had this for a while, but no, <laughs> we just got this. So this requires employers to reasonably accommodate, unless it's an undue hardship, uh, even a healthy pregnancy. So you don't have to be disabled by your pregnancy. It's for a healthy pregnancy, but maybe your doctor has recommended you need an ottoman to stick your feet on at the end of the day because your feet are swelling, right? Maybe you need more breaks. Maybe you need more doctor's visits because you have a risky pregnancy. You know, whatever it is, you are entitled to come forward and ask for a reasonable accommodation. Go to HR to do that. Uh, they will be up to speed on all of this stuff, but that is a brand new law. And I just wanted you all to know it. It also does apply to a healthy pregnancy. We also have a new lactation law and it is covers everybody, exempt, not exempt employees. It covers all employees who return to work after having a child and they're still nursing and they need a comfortable out of the way private space to do that. And, and you can get as many lactation breaks as you want up to one year after the birth of the child. So again, a brand new law that one went into effect at the end of uh, December of 2022. So all of that stuff is kind of hot off the press. So I wanted to mention those. Undermining somebody's work or their authority because they're in a protected class could be a form of discrimination or harassment. Ostracizing or, or keeping somebody out of the loop. I can't tell you how many cases I have where people are like, I never get put on these emails and then I don't know what's going on. And there may be a business reason for that or not. But if it's because that person is in a protected class, that's going to be a problem. If you're trying to make it harder for them to do their job by not keeping them in the loop, for example, I think you all can see that. Uh, these stereotypes are really interesting uh, because they can be kind of subtle. And sometimes you don't always pick up on them. But I think it's important for us to remember, again, when we're at work, it's not our job to judge our coworkers, just like you don't judge anybody that you interact with in the scope and course of your day, right? You, you see all kinds of people, um, some of them nicer than others. <laughs> but nonetheless, you all see everybody in humanity, right? And we don't, we don't judge the people we interact with because that's our job, right? We, we've got to get things done. We've got to deal with people. And that's what we do. So we don't judge them or stereotype them. Same thing with your coworkers. You and I just need to work together, okay? We don't need to judge each other or, or, or say demeaning stereotypical things uh, about those protected classes. It's just not productive. Again, we are on the same team when we're here. You can think whatever you want about me in your head, but when we're all here, we're all part of that same team. So I thought these were sort of funny. Um, I found these uh, when I was Googling this stuff the other day, and I thought these were funny. You know, doesn't reinforce sexist stereotypes. Certainly not. You know, she's not wearing Barbie pink, right? She looks serious. She looks tough. I don't want to go up against her in court. She's scary. <laughs> but she might still wear dresses. She might still wear uh, Barbie clothes. And she must, she might like, we're just people, right? Just because we have a certain appearance, or we talk a certain way, doesn't necessarily mean that's who we are. We are all individuals. I like this one too, has tattoos, but shoot, he may wear a thousand dollar suit and tie to work. Has a great job, just loves playing with his kids. That doesn't mean, you know, he's living on the streets because he's got tattoos. I, I may be the only person in America left who doesn't have a tattoo. Okay, no, okay, I got some people with me in here, all right. Uh, but I think it's interesting. It's amazing how people fit outside of sort of these narrow ideals that we have, um, and they manage to be perfectly fine folks. We've got the female boxer, we've got the male chef. You know, we're, we're just who we are. And isn't that kind of fun? Just imagine if we were, <laughs> so I don't know if you all have to deal with artificial intelligence much, but you know, if we were all bots, our, our robots, it would be pretty boring, right? 
I kind of like the unique differences of people uh, that they bring with them and, and getting to know them and to see how that fits into the work environment and can be great for the work environment. People come in, have different ideas about things. When you all are collaborating, that can only add to the process. So I hope we can get away from judging our coworkers or judging the people that you all encounter when you are doing your jobs and certainly not stereotyping them based on those 14 protected classes. We all know that stereotypes exist, but I think we're, we're, we're breaking all those down as we go along, right? Uh, we really are, we're making great progress on that. Um, I also don't want us to stereotype the idea of sexual harassment. It really is not the typical, a male supervisor sexually harassing a female subordinate employee. It is so much bigger than that. And so I want to kind of, just as a reminder, any gender can sexually harass any other gender. Okay, And you can have a situation where it's all men and there's sexual harassment going on. And I don't even mean in the sexy sense, I mean, uh, guy talk, locker talk, you know, stereotypically locker room talk for guys. Maybe there's a guy there that doesn't like that. Maybe he's really uncomfortable with that. He gets to speak up and say, I don't like that at work. That makes me feel uncomfortable. And, and it's not an appropriate response to say, oh, dude, come on, aren't you one of the guys? See what I mean? That's that stereotype thing. You got to play along. Well, no, you don't. You just get to be whoever you are. <laughs> I mean, we have certain policies you have to follow, but otherwise you you bring yourself to work, right? And so we don't want to be putting people, you can't think if we're all women that, that we can sit around and talk about things and, and think that one of those women isn't going to be offended if it's about those 14 protected classes, right? Same thing if everybody is of one race or one age. You know, you got to think about that. Um, the idea of harassment is making anybody uncomfortable. Everybody could be non-binary. And there could be some harassment going on within that group. I, that, that, that's not a defense to say, oh, well, everybody was the same. No, we're not, because we're all individuals, right? We're all individuals. That's what we got to remember. Uh, if you, again, have questions about what's okay, what's not okay, if you see somebody doing something and you're just not sure, it's okay to call HR and go, hey, I saw something and, you know, is this okay? You know, is this, is this, is this okay within our policies? Is it not okay? It's better to check and be sure than to let it go, particularly if you see somebody being abused and they're maybe not, not comfortable speaking up for themselves, maybe because of their personality, they just don't feel comfortable speaking up. Help them out. I mean, that's, that's what we're all about. You want to let somebody be picked on. Besides, if the person's being picked on, they're not going to be doing great work, right? They're going to be looking over their shoulder every five minutes wondering who's going to be picking on them next. Or which email are they going to open up that's going to be some horrible thing, you know, some meme or something making fun of them that's going to make them miserable. That does not create a productive work environment. So let's just think about that as you all are covering these topics. By the way, everything we're talking about, for those of you who are live streaming this morning with us, welcome. And uh, all these rules apply whether you are virtual or whether you are in person. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission just uh, several days ago issued new um, harassment guidelines in the workplace. They haven't become final yet. They're proposed rules, but they go in depth into all sorts of examples of online harassment that can occur within Zoom meetings. And that that is just as bad as doing it in person. So again, that's just a part of the change in our world, right? They also talk a lot about social media and how coworkers can really make each other miserable through their social media interactions to the point where you know it becomes a problem at work. So really, really good stuff that they are putting out to try to update all of us and say, hey, it's a different world. We got to take that into account. So don't, don't stereotype this idea of harassment and think it's old school. It's anything but. <laughs> I mean, I have to stamp with it like every single day. Uh, I mentioned earlier at social events that are work-related, uh, these same rules apply. And the state of Tennessee courts have recognized that there are some things where you all go out together after work that are work related doesn't mean all those incidences are but we have we're getting into holiday season so you know we have different holiday parties coming up different holiday get togethers you guys celebrate you know go out go to lunch uh, do all those things you know you can't just let your hair down because you're not in the building anymore 
if you're still around your work colleagues, we expect everybody to conduct themselves appropriately. Is that fair enough? Yeah, okay, good. So I wanna skip now from the 14 protected classes to general bullying in the workplace. We have seen a huge increase in uh, people coming forward and being comfortable coming forward all across the country with all different industries. And people saying, you know, I'm just being bullied. It's not because of any protected class. It's not race or sex or I'm just being picked on. <laughs> I'm just the one, you know, uh, that's getting it, you know, like the kid, the, the weaker kid in the playground who doesn't fight back. They're the one that gets bullied, right? So this is just general bullying. And when does that become a huge problem? So I want to show you some examples of this. I think it's one of those, that we all know it when we see it, right? And I bet you everybody in here is thinking back through your life and there's a name in your head of a bully. I bet everybody in here can think of somebody. Yeah, everybody's nodding yes. Yeah, we can all think of that person, whether it was in second grade or whether it was last week. You know, we can all think of that person. So we know it when we see it, but let's look at some examples to kind of flesh it out a little bit. So all the things that I put on the screen, whether it's, you know, insulting people, particularly in front of their coworkers, just to humiliate them, just to gain some sort of advantage to make yourself feel better. You know, what's that about? It's not productive. It's not appropriate. It's not respectful. Um, so you got to think about these things. Um, verbal outbursts, and I'm just going to call it yelling, you know, yelling at people to intimidate them. You know, I always say, don't get louder, improve your argument. <laughs> you know, it's like yelling doesn't make, make it any better. And it can be really offensive to people and their psyche and their mental health well-being, which we talked about is part of what matters, right? Uh, I saw a court case the other day. I want to say it was somewhere out West, but it was, <laughs> I literally cannot make this stuff up. So it was a um, employee. She said her supervisor had yelled at her that morning. She went to HR. She said, my supervisor yelled at me this morning. HR calls up the supervisor and goes, knock it off. We don't do that. That's unacceptable. I don't want to hear about this again. Don't do it. The same person, the supervisor, <laughs> I love this, calls the same employee in at the end of the day to his office, closes the door, proceeds to scream and yell, to show that he wasn't screaming and yelling earlier in the morning, but he is now. I love people. I, they're just hilarious. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, who would think of doing this stuff? I'm like, where, where, where was the brain? There was no brain. I, I don't know what was going on there, but clearly tuned out of the brain power. But people do stuff like that. It's like, you're at work. You're at work. You know, stop. <laughs> take 10 minutes, go walk around the block, do something. <laughs> I spend a lot of time typing emails and then I go delete, 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 delete. I, that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> Somebody outside of this conversation that reads this is not going to get the funny part of this at all. So yeah, I delete, delete a lot. Um, but again, all these things up here, trivializing somebody's achievements, you know, belittling them, making them, what are we doing that for? You know, that's not productive. We don't want to do that. Uh, obviously threats, threatening conduct, you guys. So here's another one. So I have a client who has uh, employees who drive trucks. They have cameras in the trucks and the cameras face the driver. So you're seeing the inside of the truck. So I'm literally, they send me this video. A lot of times they just go, Hey, look at this and we'll call you. So I'm like, okay. You know, and I got the big, you know, monitor. So I'm putting it up on the big screen, literally you guys. And this just happened this summer. This guy drives up in his truck, coworker comes up to the door, windows roll down, they get into a fight. You can't, there's no audio, but you can tell the F word is being bandied about. You can tell this is not going well. They're turning red, they're getting angry. The one guy opens the cab door of the truck and literally starts choking the driver. And I'm like, this is not HBO. This is, I'm like watching someone, get, I'm like, what is, what, what? And so I just turned it off. So I was like, I got to figure out what is going on here. Thank goodness he let go and nobody was harmed and no animals were harmed or anybody in this filming. But I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, what is going on in our workplace? Hello? <laughs> I don't know who's calling in. Um, but I mean, seriously, what is that about? So, you know, we always have to be aware of violence. If you all ever feel that a coworker or anybody that you come in contact with, or a member of the public or whoever is about to get violent, go get help immediately. You know, walk away. You know, discretion is the better part of valor. You're not gonna win that fight, walk 
away, get some help immediately. We actually had somebody who somehow managed to make it up to the 20th floor of our building, which is out on West End the other day, and just like made herself, nobody knew who she was. And she was just like, oh, I'm just going back to the cafe and get some coffee. And we're all like, what? <laughs> I mean, we had to get security. I mean, but how did she manage to make, I mean, it's so, we think it's so secure, but somebody had put her in an elevator and pushed a button and let her come up. So anything like that, where it might be, you know, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going to happen here. People might be in trouble. You all need to speak up. Don't hesitate even a moment. We are so proud of our staff for immediately calling security and saying, you know, stop this. You know, we don't know what's going on. We don't know who this is and they don't appear to have any business here. So it's really kind of scary, right? When you think about it. So err on the side of getting some help with this stuff. Now, what is not bullying behavior, which I have had certainly people say this is bullying behavior and it's not. Being a tough boss, as long as you have high expectations and you're the same for everybody and you're not abusive in how you are setting those high expectations, that's not bullying, right? <laughs> I, had, I had an administrative assistant who didn't understand why she had to be at the office at 8 a.m. when her lawyer might not be there till 10. I don't know how many conversations we had, but it was a lot where I was like, but you have to be here to answer the phone and answer the emails and maybe you need to call the lawyer on their cell phone. And maybe your lawyer was up till 3 a.m. trying to get a brief filed right? <laughs> uh, you know, maybe they're sleeping in a little bit, which is okay. We, we, we're we fine with that. You know, we, we, we want them to stay up and do what they need to do to get the brief filed. But I mean, she just didn't get it. She just was not going to do that. It was just, if, he, if my lawyer's not here, then I don't need to be here. And we had to part ways. She was like, y'all are bullying me. And I'm like, by making you be here at the same time every morning, that would be called life. <laughs> be called life it's not good um but that's not bullying right i mean we can all agree that unless somebody is being abusive and carrying out their leadership responsibilities that's not bullying so it's not bullying behavior for leadership at all different levels of aoc to do things that is within their bailiwick coaching feedback i'll never forget about i don't know 15 years ago i edited, uh, I, I was kind of new to the firm and I had edited an associate's work and I handed it back to him and said, hey, this is really good, but there's just a couple of things. Take another look at this case. I'm not sure that's exactly what it holds, you know, all that sort of stuff. She stood up, she's very young, you know, I had like 30 years on her, but she stands up from behind her desk and she goes, who are you to edit my work? She didn't get the Kim Vance memo. <laughs> Like I'm getting fans. <laughs> Been doing this a while. You know, you, you might learn something, you know, I don't know. So yeah, one of my law partners had to take her out to lunch and explain the whole dynamic. <laughs> of, you know, you're supposed to be learning from her, you know, she's not the enemy, you know, but she was like, well, I've been here a lot longer than you. Who are you? I'm like, well, I've been around a while. <laughs> but isn't that funny? You know, she she just saw that as so offensive. And I'm like, I was being nice. I could have, you know, been horrible, but I was really being nice. I'm trying to help. So so when sometimes when leaders give feedback, it doesn't always come across well. But if that's truly what they are trying to do and they are not being abusive about it, right? That's just part of the job. Okay. So we have to keep that in mind as well. All of these things are within the purview of what leaders do. If you need help, and I am not joking about this, I am dead serious. Do not toss and turn even one night on your pillow. Not in today's world. There is no stigma to coming forward and saying, I got a problem. I need some help and I don't know what to do. There is zero stigma. This is not 1964. Okay. I mean, there's just not. It is, and I'm in every kind of industry. I'm all over the United States. I'm in a different city and state every week. And I see all kinds of things. And oh my gosh, it has so changed. Organizations are so grateful when people come forward. They're like, we had no idea, but we will fix this. You know, but they would never know unless somebody came forward. So how do you get help and when should you get help? Don't, don't, like I said, don't wait. Don't wait and say, oh, it's going to get better. Really? What are you basing that on? Because <laughs> that never happens, right? If somebody's bullying you or harassing you or discriminating against you, it is unlikely going to be a one-time thing. This is not the way it operates, right? If nothing is done, it's going to go on and it's probably going to get worse. 
So waiting, rarely if ever, I can't even think of a situation where it ever helped anything. So don't hesitate to go even after one incident as soon as possible and get some help. Uh, I can assure you um, human resources wants to hear from you. Leadership wants to hear from you. You guys know about things that are going on that nobody else does. You know, people are always like, well, management knows about that. They just don't want to do anything. Not, not always true, folks. Sometimes literally they have no clue. Y'all are on the front lines. You know, you deal with your coworkers every day. If somebody is crossing the line, being inappropriate, please speak up. Okay. You have options and you are welcome by law to choose whichever of these options you are most comfortable with. There is no, when you want to complain about bullying or discrimination, harassment, retaliation, those kinds of things, you do not have to ever go through a chain of command. Why is that? Because it could be your supervisor, right? And the chain of, boy, that would just stop, right? They would just stop it, right? So you have choices, you have options. You can go to any director. You can go to human resources. You can go to your immediate supervisor if you're comfortable doing so and, and they're not the problem. For judges, you can go to any director, you can go to HR, or you can go to the chief justice. So lots of options for everybody. Please make use of those options. How do you raise a concern? There is a form that you guys have that's online. Uh, you are encouraged to fill that out because it's helpful and it, it might make you think, what information do I need to share? But it's not absolutely required that you fill out the form. You can call, you can email, uh, you can get to the people to help you in whatever way is best for you. But we do have that form available. And again, it might be good if you have a concern, look at the form because you go, oh, these are the things they're going to be asking me. And so it might help you prepare for that meeting. Um, so in your policies, for those of you in the room who are uh, management supervisors, including any judges who are with us today, you are required if you receive a complaint, if someone comes to you with a complaint and it looks like maybe discrimination, harassment, general bullying in the workplace, um, you have a duty to report that, generally going to human resources to do that. So that's a special obligation as part of your policies for anybody who's a manager, a supervisor, and any of the judges. Okay, so a little, little added bonus there for you guys. Uh, but that's a good thing, right? Because you may not necessarily know how to handle it. And so the HR people are the ones who they, they do that for a living. They study it. They are schooled. They are educated in how to do that. It's much better for you. Go get some help. Get that, get that partnership going with HR to help you through those things. So I think that's always a good policy to have. Now, a lot of people are like, well, is it confidential? Um, well, there are times where legally we're required to do an investigation, and sometimes we just need to do an investigation to figure out what's going on, right? So there are going to be certain people that have to be interviewed. So it's not going to be 100% confidential, but everybody in human resources who does this for a living, the goal is always to keep it as confidential as possible under the circumstances while still following the protocols of a good investigation. And again, that's that's just part of life. You can't go complain about somebody and expect you know, if you want it fixed, then that other person gets to say their side of the story too. I mean, that's just fair, right? It can't be one-sided. So they're going to have to know that there was a concern raised and they need to be given an opportunity to respond. And if somebody complains about you, don't you want that opportunity? Yeah, you want to know, right? You want to know what it is. What are they saying about me? And you want to say, well, let me tell you why they're doing that. You know, they don't like me. So, you know, that there's all that stuff. So I think you all can understand why it's not 100% confidential when you go and complain. Retaliation, you are protected by law, both Tennessee and federal law, and you're protected by your policies from any type of retaliation because you came forward and raised a concern about yourself or somebody else, or because you were interviewed maybe as part of an investigation. Maybe you were a bystander and you saw something or you didn't see anything, and that may be important to the investigation. So you are protected if you feel like at any time that anybody is treating you differently because you participated in an investigation or because you reported something to HR, or raised a concern, again, you need to report that through the same channels and, and quickly. That We're getting into some really stuff, serious stuff when you have people retaliating and trying to squelch 
anybody coming forward and raising concerns. That's that's absolutely unacceptable. So we take that very, very seriously. There are many different types of corrective action that can be issued for violations of our workplace policies, whether it's general bullying, discrimination, harassment, et cetera. Um, up to for, for those who are licensed, uh, you can be reported to the Board of Judicial Conduct as a judge. Uh, and you can certainly be reported to the, the Board of Professional Responsibility if you're a lawyer for some of the conduct. That stuff changes all the time. And then all the usual stuff, coaching, counseling, additional training, uh, warnings, probation, termination. There's no rule of law that says any one of these things is required. Each one is determined based on the circumstances of each situation. So I don't want you all to feel like, I don't want to tell, I don't want to report this because I don't want to see anybody lose their job. Well, erase that from your mind. They might lose their job, but if they do, it's because of what they did, not what you did. And we don't know that that's even going to be the end result. So we want you to feel comfortable coming forward. If you have a concern, then it's important. There are probably others who have the same concern. So again, please, 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 in this day and time, there's just no excuse for not speaking up. If you see something that's wrong, you got to say something. And you got to get to the people who can actually do something about it, right? If you're just gossiping with your coworkers to go, can you believe she did that again? Well, that's not going to help anything, right? I mean, it's kind of entertaining, kind of takes the stress off, but it doesn't fix anything. It doesn't fix the problem. And we're about fixing those things, making sure people are doing the right thing. So again, if you see something that's wrong, say something. Don't assume, oh, the leaders know and they've made a decision not to do anything about it because that may be the farthest thing from the truth. All right, bottom line, getting down to that line again. So here it is, takes every single one of us, every single one of us, making sure that we all matter. You matter. If things aren't going well, you need to speak up. You need to get help. If you see a coworker who's suffering uh, from these things that are violations of the policy, help them. Go with them to seek help. Go on their behalf and seek help. But it takes literally every single one of us to make sure that we have the work environment that we all want, which again is one where your well being matters, your mental health and well being. Your career matters, your ability to be treated fairly with equal employment opportunities, like the law says, and your whole work environment matters. That's the only way you can really excel. If your work environment is miserable and you're driving to work every morning going, oh, I don't want to do this, you know, and it's because of somebody violating our policies, well, that's unacceptable. But again, just feeling bad about it isn't going to fix it. You've got to get it to the people who actually can look into it and get you the relief that you need. So once again, remembering that you matter, it's on you. You matter, but you got to speak up and make sure that you are protecting yourself by speaking up and saying, hey, this isn't right. There's something going on here and it's just not right. And if everybody in here will do that when things go a little off key, that's when we'll have the great work environment that is really terrific for everybody. So um, with that, I've got a few minutes. Thank you all for coming, by the way, and taking time out of your day, those of you online as well. Uh, does anybody have any questions they want to throw out about anything under the sun? Talk a little bit more about, I guess, bullying, where we are, and kind of, I think that's probably the biggest area. And right. How to handle having a fun environment and you know make jokes but where that line is right. how maybe managers or others can pick up on cues that maybe people are feeling uncomfortable. The you know the other thing that's really interesting and I, I, I was gonna say this and then I changed my mind but now that you've asked me I'm gonna say it anyway. So this is good. You know, not only could it possibly be coworkers, you know, who are engaging in bullying conduct, but it could be, you know, you know, you guys come into contact with a lot of lawyers in the scope and course of your job, and we're no picnic. Sorry. <laughs> sorry to the bar. I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, because we are, we get stressed out. That's not an excuse, but we get stressed out. We're trying to win our case. We're trying to protect our clients. And so sometimes we end up yelling at, at the administrative staff for the courts, right? 
we don't yell at the judges because they can put us in jail. Uh, so we don't do that. Well, some of us do, but they, that doesn't go well. <laughs> I saw a federal judge put a put a reporter in the in jail once because his phone went off during a hearing. And he was like, did you bring your toothbrush? And the poor reporter's going, I don't understand. And he goes, Marshall? Uh, and they exited him out with two marshals on either side. And that scared me. I was like, whoa, that was fast. Uh, one minute you're doing your job, the next minute you got two marshals on either side of you. That is not good. Uh, but, but don't forget, you don't have to put up with abuse from, from anybody, including third parties who, who don't work for AOC but you come into contact with, whether it's a member of public, uh, it might be a, a, a juror, it might be uh, people asking questions, uh, it could be anybody, but, but you don't have to put up with that. And I think recognizing as, as leaders, you know, when you have that role, you're just in a different position. And I think I was about 40, maybe, before I realized that my group of employees, my my attorneys and my support staff that I directly supervised, they watched every single thing I did. And, you know, having that, you know, you don't realize that, but they do. And so if you're in leadership, you have to be cognizant. You know, are you losing your cool? Maybe because of something that happened at home last night and you're just in a bad mood, you know? But, but it comes across in how you deal with your staff. Maybe you are raising your voice. You know, maybe you are too abrupt. You know, there are some niceties that are required to be good leaders. And, and that's, you know, paying attention and saying to an employee who maybe looks miserable, hey, what's going on? You know, what can we do? You know, you look like you're not happy. You know, it's paying attention, but it's it's being aware of our own behavior and realizing, you know, it was forever before I realized, you know how, you know, you're working at your computer and maybe maybe your supervisor or coworker comes over and stands next to you and you're seated, they're standing, but you're both looking at the computer screen. They're literally on top of you, right? Uh, especially if you're in a cubicle environment. I mean, that can be really tight, right? Um, and it can be really uncomfortable. It can be intimidating. It, it can be, you know, you're in my personal space and I don't like that. So it can be physically intimidating. Uh, but that's not a good way to work. It took me a long time because I used to do that all the time. So I'd just run in somebody's office and go, let me see how the brief's coming along. And not even realizing that I'm like over them, which I'm so short. It was like a moment of power. <laughs> but I realized that was not good. And I stopped doing that because I thought that that is going to get me in trouble. And it's not the right thing for the employee because I, you know, we forget that as leaders, you know, we can be intimidating just because that's our role. Uh, some people are physically intimidating because of their height or their stature. Um, some people can do that look like, you know, where somebody puts their glasses on like this, just looks at you. Now, you know, you're in trouble, right? Now we know, we just know. And, you know, we could all wear masks. We still knew because eyes tell a lot. So I think we have to be cognizant of our own behavior. I was in um, Rainsville, Alabama a couple of weeks ago, my first trip, beautiful place. Uh, I was in Rainsville and the HR person pulls me aside before I was going to do the training. She goes, here are the things you really need to talk about because we've got this person, you know, and it was like they just simply were not aware of their own physicality. So they were constantly touching employees and just not not paying attention to the fact that they might have a 10 minute conversation with the employee and the whole time they've got their hand on the employee's shoulder. Well, you know, I'm a personal space person. I have a box. Anybody, y'all, okay, some of y'all are going, yeah, we're with you. I got my box, don't get in my box. So, so don't, 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 you see me go like that, I'll move back, you know, I'm like, mm-mm. Uh, so remember, we have to be aware of what we're doing. I got really, you, you all will think this is funny, I make fun of myself now, but you know, there's this new thing on the phone and the watch, the Apple phones and the Apple watches now where it's excessive noise level and it will pop up and tell you when like the noise level is like gonna make you hard of hearing. So the other day I'm on the phone with a client and it's stressful and they're wanting me to do something and I'm telling them that's really not a good idea because <laughs> that violates the law. And they're saying, but we really want to do it anyway. And I'm going, ah. <laughs> and so it's very, very stressful. And all of a sudden my watch goes, you are exceeding the noise level. And I thought, oh my God, I didn't even realize, you know, that I had gotten sort of loud, you know, which is never good with my own client. <laughs> good thing it's a long time client, but, but I wasn't aware. I had no clue. I had no clue. 
So again, I would encourage everybody. And the other thing I would say for leaders in the room, as well as all of you, is we have to pay attention to what our employees are doing to each other. You can't just sit in your office or behind your computer and never go out amongst the people, <laughs> so to speak. You, you got to do, what's the old management by walking around MBWA from the 80s? Management by walking around. You got to get out there. It's part of your job. You are the ultimate third grade hall monitor. Where are my hall monitors from third grade? Where are my crossing guards? So I like that because you got to wear the badge. It's cool. Because you got out early. <laughs> but but I'm serious. You know, we, we have to be more cognizant of what is going on because that is your legal responsibility is to monitor and make sure people aren't harassing each other, discriminating, bullying. We can't just say, oh, well, nobody came to me and complained, so I don't have to deal with this, right? Your responsibility is bigger than that, not only under your policies, but in the eyes of the law. Our test is, did you know about it or should you have known about it if you were paying attention? and you didn't do anything. Oh, so it doesn't require a complaint to trigger our duty to act for you to go to HR and get some help and say, what do I do now? Anything else you want me to address specifically? Okay. All right, I've got 11.01, so we are right at the mark. Thank you to all of those who joined us virtually this morning. Thank you to all of you who are here in person. Always a pleasure to see everybody. I wish you well for the rest of the year and on to 2024. It's great to see everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.